Snake! Ah, ah, I got you, finally! Did uh, you make the popcorn or should I? Cause I was kind of feeling like caramel. Popcorn? What would we need popcorn for? For the movie, Snake! They're running the finale to the Metal Gear Saga this week! Don't tell me you forgot! But, Otacon, Metal Gear isn't a movie! <laughs> oh, Snake! Anyway, Meryl is picking up some drinks and maybe even some calorie mates! Quit joking around! Metal Gear is not a movie! Uh, sure, Grandpa, now let's get you to bed! Not a movie. Oh man, I'm so excited for Metal Gear Solid 4! We're finally gonna get to see the exciting conclusion of the epic Metal Gear Saga! I'm still a little wary though. It's still a game you want, right? Huh? Well, uh, sure, I guess. I mean, what I really want to see is more like a crazy season finale with all the exciting reveals and plot twists I've come to expect with this franchise. Something tells me one of us is gonna be left dissatisfied. If not both. Hey, the gameplay updates and changes actually feel pretty good. There's a lot of notable improvements from MGS3. Maybe I was worried for- Oh, yes! Oh, a new cutscene! Oh, man. Is that Raiden? Oh, dude, he looks so awesome now. I wonder what happened to him since Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh, boy, maybe I was worried for nothing, too! Oh, man. Oh, dude! Oh, whoa! Oh, my- Oh, oh, oh man. Oh man, oh man, there they go, there they go! Dude, this move, or, I mean, that game is so intense! Oh, a boss fight, boss fight, heads up, hamster, what? boss fight! What? Oh, 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 oh god, finally! Uh, okay, so, uh, anyway, uh, the gameplay is still cleaned up with some nice improvements, like a nerfed but still useful Soliton radar, uh, some better UI and customization mechanics, and a full body camo suit that adapts to its environment without the need to constantly pull up menus to swap. Replacing your stamina gauge, Snake now gets a stress meter that fills up as things like danger, temperature, or even bad smells affect him for long periods of time. This can disastrously affect your aim, your natural healing, and cause Snake more back pain and joint pain from crouching, seizing up his body, and keeping him from moving for a few moments. Old Snake is also in a muscle suit, so luckily you won't be limited to moving as slow as any other crotchety old geezer. You've also got access to a robotic drone built by Otacon to help you in your missions, but ends up only really being useful in particular situations outside of just messing around. This alongside more numerous scripted rail shooter segments keeps the game playing like a revamped version of what makes Metal Gear great to begin with, all mashed into one. Oh, sweet, you beat the boss! Oh man, I gotta see what happens next. Oh my god, that was amazing! Oh my god, I can finally play again! This game is beautiful! Wait, that's freaking it?! Metal Gear notoriously pushes its console hardware to the limit, and this new PS3 installment is no exception. But the color palettes are all dull and washed out. This game's graphically beautiful, but at the same time, it's pretty darn ugly. But the UI characters, and especially those cinematics, are incredible. Don't forget that bland and lifeless codec, alongside the washed out environments and shallow enemy variety. It's beautiful. It's just alright. This is the dramatic conclusion to everything built up from the original games. All those cliffhangers, all those loose ends, all colliding into one big beautiful train wreck. Oh, shut up. This is everything I ever wanted in a crazy finale for Metal Gear, all rolled into one. But for newcomers, this story is so absurdly convoluted and unapproachable in its own right, it's borderline nonsense. Okay, fine, I'll give you that. Definitely play the others before playing this one. I mean, duh. Don't start with four. In most games, the numbering doesn't matter, like Street Fighter, Monster Hunter, or Final Fantasy. You can't always assume that the consumer knows whether this is one of those franchises or not. Regardless, this story was still phenomenal. So keeping this review spoiler free, I can still say that it's the exciting conclusion to all the craziness that was the Metal Gear Solid Saga. But some things are so crazy, they come off like this whole game is just one big absurd Metal Gear parody. Yes, some things are weird, but what Metal Gear was without its weird? Plus, any longtime fan who enjoyed the saga story will be thrilled to see so many of their favorite characters all converging together like this. 
and most have surprising unexpected returns with dramatic ramifications on the plot. Even still, you purchased a game. And this game not only has the nerve to throw you into extremely short gameplay segments sandwiched between monstrous cutscenes, but it's also the world record holder for the longest cutscene in a video game. And you thought that 71 minutes thing earlier was a joke. Forget the length when the content itself is so engaging. The overall theme of overcoming personal trauma and standing up for something is great and woven into nearly everyone's individual character arcs. I highly praise the other games for having their lengthy expositions in the optional codec calls, allowing players to experience the game with as much of it as they're willing to take in at once, creating a perfect balance of story and gameplay. This time, it's either all cutscenes or in lengthy forced codec calls. The optional calls are disappointingly shortened with less conversations and even less people to talk to. Hey, you know what? I'll give you that I felt substantially more for the Foxhound unit from MGS1 versus the new Beauty and Beast unit because of how that storytelling was done differently. Getting a random boss fight followed by a lengthy static codec call never really resonated with me in the same way. Especially when their stories were also overly dramatic and filled with exaggerated trauma to the point of complete unrelatability. Plus, they were all so similar, I couldn't even tell you what happened to any of them. Not just because they're samey backstories, but due to the vanilla style of storytelling. Okay, but the rest of the game is not like that. It's cinematic, it's got plot twists and crazy surprises tying all of the games together. Even things you thought might never come back from MGS3. But take it from a guy who says that the original Metal Gear Solid is one of the greatest video games ever made. Not all of these twists are good. Some just come off as contrived or forced and tacked onto the source material in ways that were never originally intended. If you swallowed the crazy up to this point, then this game will be the triumphant resolution that you've been hoping for. But only if you let it. I still absolutely love this game's story. But I definitely see why people hate it. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll pump your fists in the air at amazing callbacks and triumphant events you only dreamed of finally coming to light. You'll also sigh, facepalm, and doze off to the trigger word nanomachines. It's a masterpiece. One big, beautiful, horrendous masterpiece. Unlike how this story is desperately dancing on your nostalgia buttons, the music tends to lean on the forgettable side. The soundtrack is great as usual. It fits the atmosphere well and does what it needs to do. The other entries all had a handful of tracks that were really resonating with me, but not this time. Honestly, my favorites are just remixes of old themes. So maybe it is just dancing on your nostalgia buttons. <laughs> At best, yes. At worst, it's bland and samey. Anyway, I love that they managed to get nearly all of the original voice cast members to refill their roles. The only exception was with Revolver Ocelot, whose actor passed away before this game was created. So they still did get all living actors to return to the series for the finale. You've said finale so many times, I'm dreading all the ignorant dunces out there to point out that MGS5 is a thing. As if I didn't already extensively play IT, Ground Zeroes, and Peace Walker on my channel. Four is the finale. Don't be an idiot. If you played Metal Gear Solid 1 through 3, then you absolutely need to see it all come to its dramatic and exciting conclusion here. And if you haven't, do not play this game. You're effectively ruining four games at once by playing this series out of order. Some of my most memorable moments in this entire franchise are from this game. It's such an amazing blend of excitement and satisfaction that uses the other games to achieve great things. If you have nothing but time on your hands, this series is arguably one of the best franchises to blow it all away with, considering how this game doesn't respect your time to begin with. The Positive Gamer in me had a blast with the thrilling Metal Gear Solid 4, giving it a charged 9 out of 10. Though it was an absolute roller coaster the first time, the faults in this game tend to eat at you on subsequent playthroughs. But still, it's only enough to bring down my otherwise perfect score to a respectable and well-deserving 9. The Critical Gamer in me is incredibly conflicted with Metal Gear Solid 4, giving it an equally conflicting 6 out of 10. Half of this game is phenomenal. The other half is painfully drawn out exposition and tedious unwelcome segments tying together a string of increasingly ludicrous contrived plot twists. I can be critical of the game, and critical of the movie it inevitably became, but as a single entity, the whole package is tremendously adequate. But what do you think? Tell us all your positive and critical sides. Rate Metal Gear Solid 4 in the comments below. 
But if you've become so enthralled with the previous games to see this one for what it really is, then you're just playing with yourself. So before we end this, let's have a 50 minute epilogue. Ooh, uh, how about I talk about this popcorn? You see, well, Kim keeps buying this brand called Cousin Willie's Buttery Explosion. I'm not kidding. And I'm using it in a series called Playing With Myself. But just think about that for a minute. All right, anyway, do you have an idea for a new episode of Playing With Myself? We're rapidly reaching the end of the year, so there's only so many slots left. What are we gonna do before the year is up? Join the discussion on Discord using the new Patreon perks to nominate and vote for future episodes. Patreon members also get first picks, so check out the links in the description for some more information. As always, thank you to our amazing Patreon members, Atomic Thomas, Cameron, Arrow, Kai, Ben, Rowan, Erica, Squadfam, Sid, and Denny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more. And I will see you all in the next video. Whoop. Gotta get that buttery explosion.